back to Next Gen Console Watch, our show featuring all the news and rumors on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox series. I'm Max Scoville, and I'm joined by Ryan McCaffrey, host of IGN's Xbox podcast, Podcast Unlocked, as well as Brian Altano, who is a regular on IGN's PlayStation podcast, Beyond. Last week, we looked ahead to talk about this fall's biggest releases, or maybe lack thereof. And today, <laughs> because there's not much else to talk about, we're looking even further ahead. But luckily, 2023 looks totally bonkers. So... Let's get into it. Ryan, we just got an awesome hour-long presentation from Microsoft that showed off... Uh, hour know, and a half. You missed, half half sorry, you missed 30 <laughs> minutes. Technically, <laughs> it was 90 minutes, or it was three hours spread across two presentations. That's presen true. It was a long presentation, is the yes. point. Um, mm -hmm. But they showed off a ton of new stuff that was for the next 12 months, so which is, you know, half of 2023. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about sort of what's coming out next year? Yeah, so, you know, some every now and again in our in our gaming lives, we've had these, like, banner years that we always look back on. I mean... 2007 was a big one. 2004, we got we got a couple that are pretty close together, but it's been a little while since yeah. we've had like a monster year. Of course, the pandemic's been a big part of that of delay and everything. And it looks like next year on all platforms, because Brian's got some good stuff to talk about too, and <laughs> Nintendo's got Breath of the Wild too, and there's some cool multi-platform stuff. But on the Xbox side, uh, yeah, it's looking as as Pretty sad as this year is looking on the on the AAA exclusive front. Next year, just in that first half, per as you said, per Microsoft's own presentation, we have Starfield from Todd Howard, uh, his first new game since Fallout 4 and his first original IP basically ever, <laughs> uh, which I, I'm unbelievably excited about that game because it's it looked it looked awesome and you're just gonna get lost in this in this world if it if it is just No Man's Sky but with a with a Bethesda Game Studios RPG layer on top of it. Nothing wrong with that. Sign me up yeah. for that, right? That's, so that's going to be... Yeah. A, Pe people keep saying that like it's a bad thing, and I'm like, no, you're you're combining a bunch of great <laughs> elements yeah. into something new from a studio that makes stuff that is really, really fun, so can't go wrong. Yeah, and then uh, you've got their, the other big Bethesda exclusive from Arcane, who, by the way, is really good at making 10 out of 10 reviewed video games. They've, they've done it repeatedly, and that's, of course, Redfall, the four-player... You know, one to four player co-op vampire, you know, uh, not, it's not, a, it's not Left for Dead. That's what we learned right. about it. It's, it's like uh, Left for Blood. You know, it's, there's a vampire <laughs> thing. It's <laughs> not to bit. be confused with Back for Blood. No, no, it's the thing that I think really kind of made my ears perk up is how much they emphasize that that doesn't have to be a cooperative experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which yeah. I know a lot of people were kind of like, I like story games. Give me the this single is player one. story. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. This so is one. So yeah, I'm stoked for that. And then uh, one of the... You know, most unfortunate delays in in the history of gaming uh, is is the the delay of Stalker Two because it happened because War literally came to the doorstep mm -hmm. of these talented developers, some of whom, uh, many of whom have, have gotten out, as we saw from the the incredible piece that was in the at the end of the Xbox Extended Showcase. Some of them stayed behind. To fight, which is just a, it's just an amazing they human story. Literally took took up arms to yeah. defend their country. I, that was that piece was one of those things that I was sending to friends and family to be like who don't even play video games to be like watch this dev diary to give you an understanding of how how this has impacted yeah a, 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 just a regular group of people trying to work at an office job yeah so you know? I feel like like that when that game does come out in 2023. It, it the odds of it being outstanding are very high because that studio's previous games are also outstanding. But I think there's going to be an ec a very distinct extra layer of sentimentality, and it, that the release of Stalker Two is just going to matter more for I think the entire. I think it's going to be a moment for the entire industry. Really, no, that's mm -hmm. going to be that's going to be a big deal. And also, if they need to take till 2024, by all means, you know, yeah, like right. They, they, I think they have a. They have a pretty good excuse to take their time on yeah. this one. Microsoft, who's publishing it, obviously, is not exactly gonna gonna say, uh, "Well, sorry, the, we're not gonna fund any. You need to just get it done." Like, yeah, no, it's yeah. Th th they don't do that anyway anymore, uh, and they're certainly not gonna do it under this circumstance. But no. Stalker Two, originally April is originally gonna be out by now, mm -hmm. uh, and then it moved to December, and then the war happened. So um, I'm pretty confident we will see it in 2023 there. And then Forza Motorsport, always a big deal. I mean, Her I feel like Horizon, Forza Horizon has finally broken through to more than just 
racing game people like oh, yeah. me. Like it's it's finally like I think Brian, you're a good example of a guy who doesn't really play racing games, but you you finally you and the rest of the world learn like oh, Horizon's actually just an incredible experience. You don't have to be like this nuts and bolts car guy. I, that's exactly why I got <laughs> into it. Um, it was just this massive, super fun playground. I, I was playing it like a platforming game half the time. You know, I was like, yeah. oh, I got to get the collectibles up yeah, there. Yeah, all the, all the billboards and stuff. Yeah, and, it's go yeah. it's gorgeous. It's incredibly fun. It's arcadey. Obviously, uh, motorsport. It is back to the nuts and bolts stuff. So that's yes. going to be a little jerk of the wheel, no pun intended. <laughs> but I think I think um, fans will have to figure out how to kind of recalibrate a little bit and sit down and be like, okay, this is what this is going for. But, but motorsport has been a. Yep. Uh, I mean, I would argue that that motorsport is ever has either met or surpassed Gran Turismo in the simulation racing game quality department uh, a while ago, and it's it's been a phenomenal series. And so this this is a next gen only reboot. They are leaving the Xbox One behind. Mm -hmm. We saw some gameplay footage of it at the showcase. It looks amazing as you'd expect. It's pro history suggests it's going to play amazing. So that's going to be a big one for Xbox next year. That's exciting. I, I'm I'd be willing to bet that they are well aware of how many people who don't play racing games jumped on board with this, and they you know are probably going to take some cues from Horizon. Obviously, without turning this entirely into an arcade racer, right. mm -hmm. they like. They know people are paying attention. So. Yeah, I mean, it is a it is a closed circuit, track focused, competition based racing game, whereas versus the kind of more loose, free form, like top down on a summer day kind of right. uh, thing that Horizon is. But but yeah, motorsports going to be a big deal because it's we haven't had Forza Motorsport in a while. Like they were, it was every other year like clockwork for the basically the entire 360 and Xbox One generation. Until now, and now they've they're starting, you know, rebuilding it from scratch. So that's going to be big. And then uh, a game that got a lot of notice when it was first announced, even though there there has still hasn't been a shred of gameplay, but I think it's probably going to be a big deal next year. Is Arc Two mm -hmm. Vin Diesel's <laughs> Arc Two? Like Arc is a is a big game. It has been for a while, and uh, the the sequel is is probably going to also be a big one as well. I agree. I, it is very funny that like that so many people played the first game and now Vin Diesel is just, you know, intrinsically connected to the second one <laughs> it, it, inseparably, um, which adds a comedic layer to me because I don't know, seeing Vin Diesel running around a video game like this is very funny to me. But Do we know anything about what the approach is to this one? Are they no. going single player? I would, I would assume <laughs> that they're doing something more narrative focused yeah. if they've got Vin Diesel Exactly. There. Unless that's just like the default skin that everyone's playing as and just it's a bunch of Vin Diesel's running around. <laughs> Going to be a big deal either way. But, you know, so just those handful of games, if if all those ship in 2023, and reminder that all those are supposed to ship in the first half. Mm -hmm. So the odds of all of them making it just out sometime mm -hmm. next year are pretty good. That's that's going to make for a great year just on Xbox. And that's not counting third parties. Exactly. Yeah. It's just purely yep. Xbox exclusives. Xbox, and and yeah. I didn't even count like replaced is another like smaller kind of indie game i'm super stoked for i just was trying to target like the big triple no, that's, a this stuff. Is, that's yeah. the big tentpole stuff but I, just with that it's pretty safe to assume that next year is going to be pretty huge mm -hmm. uh let's take a look at the playstation side of things so uh on the playstation side right off the bat uh insomniac who seems to be i don't know probably the most prolific de developer on the ps5 front so far just like we're constantly able to get out big games. It seems like they're always working on something big ahead. Uh, we've got Spider-Man 2, the long-awaited sequel. It's going to be fully next-gen, I believe, and that's going to be a big deal. I can't wait to see what that game looks like without you know, PS4 tech holding it back. Uh, at the same exact time, they teased a Wolverine game. They announced one. I don't think we're going to get a Wolverine game next year. I feel like that's going to be like a 2024 thing. But still, honorable mention, if... In some universe, they go, hey, this is coming together a lot quicker. You know, his claws don't get stuck on the environments all the time. There's no glitches. The game is ready. It's out. We're good to go. You know, as someone wearing a Wolverine t-shirt, I think it's okay if you talk about Wolverine, even if it doesn't come out in 2023. Yeah, and it's actually okay if his claws get stuck sometimes. It's... I think sometimes he wants it. That's how he climbs up the little walls. Yeah. So, Pretty I mean, cool. we're like we're, we're going to get these, you know, not not necessarily back to back, but within probably a year a or two. Year, yeah. Uh, just fantastic AAA, big comic book games well and, and miles morales is probably still my favorite ps5 game yep. so far and it was supposed to just be like 
just a 1.5. Mm-hmm. I think it's actually... I like it better than Spider-Man 2018. I do too. And yeah. I love Spider-Man 2018. Yep. I just think Miles Morales, the story's better. Uh, the the open world's a little more focused. There's less... You know, you don't you don't have the annoying um, Green Goblin stuff mm-hmm. that's that's hanging out there. And yeah, I, I, I can't wait to see how Spider-Man 2 kind of fuses the two storylines because well they're one storyline but yeah how it's going to bring both characters together which we got a little taste of in the announcement trailer i'm totally with you i loved miles morales uh like christmas in new york is a magical thing so it makes me wonder what they're going to do with the sequel because it's like they've they've done the open world manhattan now they can go bigger if they want they can jersey. go elsewhere all of jersey sure yeah come on over to new jersey we got we got Pizza's almost as good as New York. <laughs> Power of the PlayStation 5. And of course, there's also Final Fantasy 16, right. which we know is coming summer of next year. Mm-hmm. That's what they said, which is, that's a narrow release window, not exactly a release date, but still kind of exciting. Yeah, that's going to be a massive, massive game, highly anticipated. I don't know if that'll hit the release date. Um, you know, Square Enix has, they're, they're ambitious. They make, they make these gigantic games and uh, there's a lot of moving parts there. So we'll see what happens. Japanese developers tend to be I don't know, a little more, I guess, focused about the release. Like, mm-hmm. they, I feel like that stuff. J- Japanese games tend not to de- delay quite as You're right. freely as as Western games. And they did also come out and say like the game's basically done, right? Yeah. That they're in the final stages of development. So I I, I think we can probably. Uh, a year out, it's probably like the safest year out prediction that you can have. I, I like that we got we got like a window, which is like that's that's it's it, it feels safer than when like you get a release date and then you don't hit that date. But having a having an entire season to look forward to, it could happen. Now, uh, there's also and I could be proven wrong by the time this episode goes up, but God of War Ragnarok, and I'm not saying that's a 2023 game, but we as of the recording, as of right now, and it's there's not going to be a 2021 game. That's for sure. <laughs> that, that is confirmed. Um, there have been nonstop r- rumors sw- uh, swirling over the last few weeks that we were going to find out about the release date by the end of this month. Again, as of the moment of the, this recording, that hasn't happened yet. June um, 29th okay. at 1.57 yes. p.m. Pacific time. I thought, you just got, I thought you just got a text with the release date. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Um, oh, I wish. So it's a weird week to yeah, try to cover this stuff. <laughs> exactly. So assuming that that game does not launch this fall and we are not already playing it on our PS5s or PS4s, uh, God of War Ragnarok will absolutely be one of the biggest games of 2023, but could not be a thing at all. Um, I so, hope it's the biggest game of 2022. That me too. I would rather play if it's me, ready to go. I can't I, wait. I would love to play that game this fall. <laughs> uh so somebody make that happen. On top of that, uh, PlayStation has uh, you know a whole bunch of uh, you know irons in the fire right now. There's a whole bunch of different things that they could be doing to service all of their uh, different platform owners from PS4 to PS5 genres everywhere. They're they're launching a new platform. Period. They are launching PSVR two, which to me is crazy ambitious because this is a you know as of now additive headset to a pre-existing console that you can't buy in a store shelf currently. So that's, you know, they're going to have some hurdles there, but they're going in big and hard on VR in ways they never have before. They're making one of the, if not the most powerful sort of consumer level VR it's kit. up there. Up there, yeah. And um, it's got an exclusive lineup of games that they're already working on. They're making uh, Horizon Call of the Mountain, which is going to be a, you know, brand new Horizon game. Obviously, it's probably smaller than the, your typical Horizon fair, but, like, it looks incredibly that gorgeous. It looks like a game, not yeah. an experience. Exactly, so exactly. It doesn't feel like out. kind of the PSVR stuff we got on early at that system's launch where it was like, okay, this is a slimmed down version of, like, you know, the big brother version of a yeah, game. This is ba- Arkham Batman puts on his shoes, not Arkham yep. well, Asylum. And it was already, <laughs> PSVR was already launching with, at that time, ancient controllers. Yeah. So these these new controllers are finally modern VR controller tech, which, yeah, that, which uh, the, will make a huge difference. The PSVR 1 controllers were so ancient that uh, you you had to buy them like in used bags from GameStop. There was a shortage. There were literally PlayStation Move controllers from like seven years before mm-hmm. that. And so. you had to go find the charging cable that you got with your MP3 player in high school. It, like was, it was like the, a it micro, the, yeah, macro, USB micro, USB, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so on top of that, there's also, uh, we just found recently at the State of Play, they're uh, doing an entire like VR mode for Resident Evil Village, which was awesome. I don't know if any of you played uh, Resident Evil 7 in VR, um, but that was one of the scariest things I've ever done, and I'm a big horror fan. Additionally, uh, you know, we, we said we weren't really going to talk about third-party stuff, but there is... Uh, uh, 
uh, mode coming to Resident Evil 4 Remake that will be on PSVR 2, where you'll be able to play the game in VR. Plus, like stuff like Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners 2, and stuff like that. I'd so. also be shocked if if Valve's not porting Half Life Alex to PSVR yeah, 2. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, as a day one title. Yeah. Because it's, you know, that game's been out for two years. So, because that, I'll tell you, more people need. Mm -hmm. access to that video game yeah it's one of the best games of the last five years so i it, i will double dip if it comes if it comes to psvr totally since, agree. since the psvr first came out the first one there have been so many PR, like vr games like both on pc and of course there's all the stuff happening with quest and you know some of those were meta oculus funded but i'm wondering if it's not some kind of like timed exclusivity thing and mm -hmm. we see them you know port it over to psvr too yeah but you know it's powerful enough to run some of the stuff that's happened in the last five years or however long it's been so that's that's exciting yeah now multi-platform you mentioned it with re4 that's that's a big one obviously there are a ton more in the works there's also diablo 4 which is kind of question marks because it's technically under microsoft but well, I, it'll it, it'll be coming out on everything uh but it'll also be in game pass as soon as microsoft takes over on you know july 1st or at, at least no later than July 1st, assuming the regulators approve the deal. So, mm -hmm. yeah, Diablo 4 on Game Pass for your Xbox Series X or S. Yeah, that's, that's a nice... Uh, that's, uh, that's tough to beat. That's, getting that game for free is a nice palate cleanser after all of the, you know, backwash of Immortal <laughs> that we just had recently. <laughs> the uh, the pricing structure on that game, I think, like, stung for a lot of people, justifiably. And so being able to play Diablo 4 day one on your subscription service is pretty awesome that's the diablo that people want yeah uh, alan wake long time associated with xbox but he's getting alan wake 2 for finally not and next gen only on that that is mm -hmm. just ps5 and xbox series and pc and it's we know it it's a survival horror game they're pivoting it from third person action adventure to full-on survival horror game which we've never really seen remedy do that and i think they're going to be really good at it like that I, makes me we, so we've been excited waiting over a decade for that video game so it's mm -hmm. uh that's gonna be a good one i like to think that they're they're making it now because they have a really good idea of what to do with it yeah you know yeah. it's not just like oh here's and, number two and epic they finally got somebody to give them money to do it which is yeah. epic mm -hmm. in this case so thanks mm -hmm. epic oh that's exciting <laughs> now uh star wars jedi survivor we got a teaser trailer for that at star wars celebration anaheim mm-hmm we don't know a ton about that, but it's, you know, Cal Kestis coming back. Respawn obviously kind of blew everyone away with that, and that was, I think, I don't know, it feels like one of the first EA games that we've gotten in a while that everyone was very positive about. You yes, know? absolutely. It was, well, especially from, like, the 10-year-long uh, exclusivity deal between EA and Lucasfilm, um, seeing a single-player-focused Star Wars game, after what we heard for years about, you know... Uh, Th those things don't sell. Those things don't work from EA. Well, they Rag do. Tag was canceled. Yeah, they canceled so many <laughs> great Star Wars games and so many great ideas. And then there was all like the controversy around loot boxes, around Battlefront 2 launch, which grew to be a great game. It was just really nice to play an awesome single player focused Star Wars game that had a little bit of Zelda Souls combat and some Metroidvania elements. You can fine tune that game by making the map a little bit better. Um, the collectibles a little more interesting than ponchos and skins. There's a lot to grow on there. Uh, I, I, I love that world. I love the combat. Bring me more, you know? Now, speaking of Lucasfilm titles, there is a big old Indiana Jones 5 movie coming out next year and mm -hmm. Machine Games is working on a new Indiana Jones game. Yeah. What do, the, do we, what I mean, do we know about the that? developers of Wolfenstein, who before that, by the way, uh, worked on another particularly sweet, uh, or well, not a sweet movie property. They turned it into one, and that was that was the Chronicles of Riddick. Oh yeah, right. the core of that bad, team. Yeah. yeah, back when they were Starbreeze. The last really good Vin Diesel game, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, while we wait for Arc Two, but uh, but yeah, I mean, there is a big question of whether or not Indiana Jones from Machine Games will be Xbox exclusive, mm -hmm. because it's possible that. The deal with Lucasfilm and Bethesda may have been signed prior to the Microsoft acquisition, but regardless, a next-gen Indiana Jones game. We haven't had... There have been a couple of good Indiana Jones games. The Collective. You remember those yes. back on the PS2 yep. and original Xbox? Yep. Uh, but that's... You're talking three generations ago now so mm -hmm. and, and I mean, what's interesting to me, Machine Games is has only ever done first-person games. Is this going to be a first-person Indiana Jones game? Probably not, although I'd be interested to see that, but seeing them do a third person uh, well, they, game will be really cool. they definitely got like really not, cool. Nazi punching physics down, so that'll be <laughs> yeah, that's we'll, true. Really good. I, we'll see how the how the whip looks in first yeah, person. That's exactly. interesting. Uh, other licensed territory, there is uh, Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. 
which is again it's that sort of it, co-op another mm -hmm. co-op dc game this time around it seems more kind of borderlandsy than the you know gotham knights is going it's yeah colorful characters teaming up to crack jokes and kill a bunch of stuff together they're definitely aiming for some like um multiplayer hijinks and cahoots i guess would be another word shenanigans, shenanigans. Perhaps, yeah <laughs> well and this is rocksteady <laughs> mm -hmm. who i mean their pedigree is established with, yep. the, with the batman arkham games and it's it's been you know with the with the uh, a polite nod to arkham vr which was clearly like a little smaller team side project for the launch of psvr and by the way i really liked it i yeah. loved i love that when you're when you put the cowl on and then you go down to the bat cave that was awesome or dancing in the mirror was uh, really fun <laughs> yeah. yeah but this is this will be rocksteady's first game in eight years That's 2015 crazy. was arkham night mm -hmm. so it's been a long wait for rocksteady's next project and uh, it's a next gen only game, and I hope it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's a little surprising to see both you know Arcane and Rocksteady, who are known for really good single player games, kind of branching out and doing stuff that's more multiplayer focused. But hopefully, they stick the landing on that one. Finally, Street Fighter Six. We got to look at that at Capcom's whole thingamajig, and it's uh, definitely looks like a kind of a new direction for Street Fighter. Yeah, more streets. Yeah, more streets, and you know, probably the same amount of fighters. But uh, otherwise, I I was watching this sort of uh, as a, a casual Street Fighter fan who's always appreciated the games and enjoyed them in the arcades and played every version of them. But I've never been like super competitive about it. And I'm looking at all like this sort of world building that they're doing around this game, and it just seems so much fun. Like they're actually building out dojos and streets and themes and all of this like environmental stuff that's super super cool. Uh, but I'm sure that once you get down to the nitty gritty, like the hardcore fighting game community is going to absolutely love this game because they, they, they know who they're making these games for at this well, point. Our, our in-house fighting game guru, Mitchell Saltzman, was with me down at the Summer Play Days event where Street Fighter VI was playable. Mm -hmm. We couldn't peel him off of it. Like, <laughs> that's he a was, good sign. Yeah, it, he was completely head over heels with it. So, yeah, that's another big one for 2023. Yeah, that's huge. And I mean, that's, Street Fighter is a known quantity. How do you get people who aren't good at Street Fighter or not familiar with Street Fighter to get excited about it? And it seems like this is a pretty, pretty big attempt at that. Mm -hmm. I'm glad and Xbox is getting Street Fighter this time. Right. That's, we didn't, yeah, that's they didn't last start. time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, now, last week we asked you a poll. Uh, what confirmed next gen fall game are you most looking forward to? Gotham Knights was the big winner with 37.9%, followed by Forspoken with 21.2%. Last of Us Part 1, a.k.a. the remake that you're not supposed to call a remake, but that's what it is, 19.7%. High on Life, that's Justin Roiland's weird first-person shooter where the guns talk to you, 10.7%. Mm -hmm. And Scorn, which is H.R. Giger first-person body part thing, 10.4%. I'm into that one. I think I feel like God of War would have won this poll had it had a release date for this fall. But oh, I don't think it would have been close. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, I'm actually surprised Gotham Knights was uh, head and shoulders above everything else on yeah. that. Just, not that it's not a big game, but yeah, that's a strong showing on mm -hmm. that list. Mm -hmm. Now, this week we're going to ask you a similar question. Which game that isn't confirmed for 2023 necessarily are you looking forward to most in 2023? Your options are Spider-Man 2, Final Fantasy 16, Starfield, Redfall, Diablo 4, and Star Wars Jedi Survivor. And Ooh. if any of the other ones coming out aren't in that list... Too bad. That's going to probably be a more balanced poll because that's. I'm having a tough time choosing you... <laughs> an option right now. I'm, I'm narrowing down to Spider Man and Star Wars, mm -hmm. but there's. Oh man, there's going to be so many good, good games on that list right now. No, I, next year is going to be a good year for games no matter what. That'll do it for this edition of Next Gen Console Watch. Thank you, Ryan and Brian. We'll be back next Friday at 6 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Eastern with more PS5 and Xbox Series X news. We'll see you then.